Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing another Ruby on Rails speedrun. This one sort of continues a previous one where we uploaded a CSV and uh, graphed it or charted it. Today we're going to be uploading a CSV and it's going to allow us to edit the CSV and then download the edited data as needed. Now optionally there is a way to save this data. I'm not going to be building that out because it's a bit beyond the scope of a quick little silly video. Uh, but I'll sort of outline how to do it while we go, just because it's a really quick thing to do. But uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and let's get started. Again, these are more for fun than they are for education, but you should be good to follow along. So I'm going to go ahead and start the timer, stop the server here, and uh, create a new Rails project. So I'm going to say Rails new video. I'm not going to be using any sort of ES build stuff, uh, so we're doing this with straight import maps. For this, I'm gonna be using the hands-on table, I think it's called, uh, because it does have a paid version, but the free version does plenty, so that should be good for us. I'm gonna go ahead and CD into this video, run a code dot to open this up in VS Code, uh, and then we can do this real quick. So for the hands-on table stuff, I believe that requires uh, coming over here, doing a, uh, what is it, bin slash import map pin, hands on table that'll allow us to add it uh, and it does require a uh, css file right here i think so we have to come into our app.html.erb file and move this over here so we can still see what we're doing and i'm just going to put this uh, css file here in the app as a cdn because it saves me some time next we need to come into i think like the the demo or something Maybe it's the installation. They had an example, here we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna need, uh, this apparently didn't work for some reason. Uh, HTTP error. Oh, this is why I never use <laughs> import maps because it always feels like it breaks. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for this to finish. Okay, so that time it looks like it finished. I don't know why that was so weird, but whatever. Uh, you know, it's, it's a work in progress, I guess. Uh, now that we have that, we can go ahead and generate a scaffold just to like have something to work with. I'm gonna call it example. I'll give it a name just so we have a field. And we're gonna do a Rails G stimulus. And I think I called it like data grid or whatever. Okay, so the reason why we're doing this like this is because it sort of sets up that backend for you where you would then just have to auto save this. Uh, in our case, we're not gonna be doing that, but if you wanted to, I would use the Ruby CSV file. I know I'm wasting time right here, or the Ruby CSV gem. This allows you to parse the CSV and then you could edit it uh, after you do this on save callback right here, which is just a quick little after change that you add into what we're about to do. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, run a Rails S to start our server. We then need to come into our routes. In our routes, we need to say, set the root to be the examples controller and the index action. After we do that, we can then come over to our side panel here in our models, in our example.rb. We wanna say this has one attached and we're gonna call this CSV, which does mean we have to stop the server and run a Rails active underscore storage colon install command. I think I'm finally learning which one of these has the G and which one doesn't. And it turns out it's action text that follows the conventions. How weird is that? Uh, now we can do a Rails DB colon migrate and then another Rails S to start our server again. We can now come over to localhost port 3000. That should take us to our homepage. And if we click new file, we now need to add that uh, active storage to our form. So let's come into our underscore form. In here, we're just gonna copy the name Oops, paste it one time. And then in here, we just want to make this the CSV and we'll put the CSV in here. Next, we wanna come into the example controller because that's what we just created. And in here, we need to permit the parameter for that CSV. So this should allow us to upload it. We now need to actually, uh, oops, we now need to come in here, and make sure this is a file uh, field, I think. Let's go ahead and do that, there we go. Uh, we need to generate some data, so I'm gonna go over to Makaru, and I'm just gonna create a ID, a first name, a last name, and an email. I'll create 10 items, so that's a bit easier to read, although you can scale this up to like 10,000 if you wanted to. And I'm gonna click Download Data. This should download it. I'm gonna move this into my Downloads folder as mockdata.csv, sounds good to me. And then I'm going to come over to our example.html.erb. As usual, we're gonna be doing this out of the partial. And the reason why we do this out of the partial is so we can have multiple of these on the same page thanks to that stimulus controller we just created. 
So I'm gonna get rid of the name. We don't really need it. I just did it for the sake of having some pre-built data. Again, don't follow a speed run for its conventions. Follow it because I guess you have nothing better to do. Uh, now, let me check what I named this JavaScript controller. I called it the data grid controller. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say this is the controller for the data grid. And then we need to have some data grid uh, data, I guess, which is gonna be an example dot uh, CSV to JSON, we can call this. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're gonna come into our example.rb and in here we wanna say this has a method, which is gonna be uh, whatever we just called it, oops, uh, which is gonna be uh, this example, uh, CSV to JSON right here. So what we need to do inside of the CSV to JSON is uh, we need to say this needs to be a CSV equals a self dot CSV dot download. I don't know if this is the best way to do it. Uh, we then need to do a CSV equals CSV dot parse, which we actually get from that gem. So we're going to do a bundle add for this CSV gem here, which is just CSV. So we'll go ahead and grab that, paste it in. There we go. Okay, so that gives us the CSV gem, and then we should be good to, after we do this, say CSV uh, equals CSV.map, and then we want to map this and to H, and then we want to do a CSV dot to JSON. Uh, there we go. Now we can come back over to our show page here, and I think at this point, the only other thing we really want to do is uh, change this to a do block so that we can put some more stuff in here. So by making this a do block, we can now create a bunch of elements in here that all fall under the stimulus controller. So the first one that I want to do is going to be is going to be uh, if if Copilot would let me tab over a div with a data dash target equal to data grid dot container. And I'm just doing this because people keep asking why I do the content tags and I just do it so you know that there's content tags. Uh, so what we're doing is doing it with regular divs so that you can see that there are other options. They're just a bit more cumbersome because it doesn't have all of that boilerplate stuff. Uh, but it does show you how to use this stimulus stuff outside of Rails if you were so inclined. Okay, so now we add the data grid uh, controller and the download action. So these are actions in our stimulus controller. So we have a target, we have an action, and we have our data. So let's come into our data grid controller to finish this up real quick. The first thing we want to do in here is make sure we have the hands-on table. We then want to give this a list of targets. And optionally, I already set up the autosave checkbox for you, if I can find it over here, uh, just because I thought someone's probably gonna ask how to do all of this, so I'd set up most of the easy stuff to quickly copy and paste. So there's your autosave checkbox, it has a data grid target of autosave, that lets you set it right here. Uh, because their example uses an autosave checkbox to see if you've made changes already, uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is in here, we need to grab that data that we just set up in here. So this is our data target, or this is our data right here with our example CSV2 JSON. So we parse that. We then want to console.log this data. And then we can do a this.hot equals new hands on table with this.container target, which is this target right here, which is this target container right here. So we do that and then in here they give us a whole bunch of stuff we can include. There is the data, there's a row headers option, a column headers, a height that is set to auto. So that means it'll go on indefinitely. And then for the license key, they give you a non-commercial and evaluation uh, license key, but just note this is for non-commercial use only. And then uh, we can also do our download action which is gonna be for our download button. Now for this one, uh, we just create the uh, export plugin and then we can, oops, I have to actually close this. Uh, we could do that. Uh, we create a export plugin, which we get from the uh, hands-on table. And then there was a whole bunch of stuff they wanted us to include here. This is the download file for the CSV, which has a whole bunch of customizable options. You can change these as you so choose. Now, if you wanted to do the um, after change, I think, 
you just do a after change callback. It has the changes in the source right here. If I come over here to the saving data, I'll have a link to all of this in the video description. You would just do something like this for your after change, which is an entire function. You have this, you check if it has the load data, you check if autosave is uh, not checked. If it's not checked, you just return so you don't save. And then you would replace this with like HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 3000. Uh, these need to be back ticks because we're going to be inserting a ID here. So you'd have like slash examples slash and then your ID, which means you'd have to set a ID in here. Uh, and then after you do that, you can then go to like slash save CSV, which means you would have to create a save CSV action in your routes. You get rid of this mode for no uh, cores and then you put something in here, which is like your Rails CSRF token. And then that grabs your CSRF token from your document. You would then pass back the data in your body. Now, important thing to note here, this is gonna be like the one row that was changed, right? So this is the one row that is changed. So you need to update that specific row in your, uh, in your uh, active storage file. Now, I, I should note, uh, unless multiple were changed at once, maybe something like that, because uh, I don't know if you can change multiple rows, but let's go ahead. Let's exit out of here. Come over to our app, refresh the page, make sure we start our server uh, and then come over to examples.new. I have to do this a couple times because Brave is broken. I'll say test. I'll upload our mock data. Click create example. Uh, and it looks like our application.html.urb file doesn't have the CDN here. Uh, so let's come over to the installation section, scroll up and make sure I grab the style sheet and not the JavaScript. I don't know why I did that. And now if we refresh, we have our CSV here. We can edit it. I'll change the first item to test. Uh, our on save might fire here. It's not gonna go anywhere because I didn't set up the routes or the controller action, but I can now click download, save this as test.csv open up test.csv and hopefully in here we'll see test as the first item. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the timer. We now have a CSV editing application in about 12 minutes and it does save backups as well in active storage. And it's already got the hookup uh, somewhat set up for saving the changes to the uh, application itself instead. If you're interested in this autosave feature, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I can do this tutorial in like a day or two. Uh, just sort of gauging interest right now. I thought it'd be fun to do a little speed run. I also have to uh, get ready for today, so I didn't have a ton of time. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in seeing how to do this auto saving, just let me know. I'll cover it another, in another video. Uh, but for now, thank you so much for watching, and ho hopefully I will see you in the next video.